Okay, hello and welcome back to the Link TV, I'm Andrew Weir, and today we're going for the Cycles render on Blender 2.66. There are actually two links in the description to Blender Cookie or Blender Guru, and they will take you through it uh, professionally and they'll say all the stuff that they know, uh, that they've researched it about. Uh, but I'm also going to try and explain it myself, just briefly, just to show you what's different, and uh, and basically the the whole system of materials and um, and how we render is all different. So you're going to have to learn some new stuff, which is why I'm not kind of, it's, it's not quite beginner, because it gets a little bit more confusing from this point, but it's a good thing to look into eventually, so you may as well check out those tutorials if you're interested. Um, basically, if we want to switch to the Cycles Render Engine, we have to go up here to the Blender Render. Uh, there's also a Blender Game Engine, which we've looked at before, uh, or we've, we've seen that it exists before, but we haven't actually looked at it. Uh, and then the Cycles Render Engine, which I'm to switch to now. Uh, there are quite a lot of differences, but if I just go back to the Blender render, my render, we can see the lights somewhere up here, and it's coming down, and it's uh, and it's completely dark where the light isn't hitting, so it's com it's going outwards, and there's no bouncing because obviously there's no other objects in there. But uh, even if there were other objects in there, there'd be no bouncing anyway uh, of light. I go into the Cycles render engine, and we render. We can see it's not a total black, which is obviously more realistic because you've got probably got one light in your room right now, or probably from one window, and if you went into the next corridor where there's no windows or lights, um, then that whole corridor is still going to be lit up just by flat from that one point. Um, I think that's kind of how it does it. I mean, it's a lot more realistic, and we can do a lot more uh, realistic metal effects and glass effects uh, with the Cycles Render. Um, it's just the way we do it is a little bit different. Uh, and another thing to mention is in object mode or edit mode or anything, uh, but, but in object mode we can go up here and go to the rendered view, where we get a rendered view of our cube, which we can take into the camera view by pressing zero and see what we're seeing. But we can also use this just to look around our shape, keep it still and uh, we can see how it looks from different angles rendered uh, which is really useful as well for getting more realistic scenes um, but when we are actually working with the actual rendering it's probably best to change your scene up here to compositing and then you can see what we've done, we've got the camera view here uh, we can still model a little bit if we want to which we're going to have to change a few things we can get a render over here on the left and and this is the node editor here, which is very important. Um, if I do, this, this shape's already got material on it, so if I go to the material setting here, uh, we're not going to see anything at the moment, but we can see that the material is registered, see, uh, right there. So we can go over here to the material here, and we click Use Nodes, which will bring up the nodes here. And the nodes is how the whole cycle system is going to work with materials. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use it with nodes, you can apparently do it quite well here. Um, but it's best to learn nodes uh, because once you get used to seeing your materials like this and you get used to pressing Shift A to add new nodes. So we've got loads here, which uh, I don't even know what half of them do. Um, but uh, experiment, follow more specific tutorials so you know what that stuff does, but try and also understand what it's actually doing so you can use it on your own work. And what we're going to do is say, uh, if I render this now, uh, which I already have, we can see that that's diffuse and uh, it goes into the surface of the shape. So this, this is the output node and uh, kind of like a circuit board, which is obviously confusing. You've got inputs and outputs, and then in between you've got different functions uh, as well. And basically, uh, that's what we've got at the moment, just a few, which is color. So if we were looking in the Blender Render engine, if we wanted our material to be green, we'd change the diffuse to green. So it's not too different um, in the actual names of what's happening. Uh, but if we want a glossy material or a, um, a shiny material in the Blender Render Engine, we'd go to Mirror and we'd just tick the box, we'd change a few settings. Uh, but we can't do that with the Cycles Render, we actually have to add and mix 
two things together, which eventually makes more sense that it is like that. But again, if you're a beginner, which you are because you're following this tutorial series, it can get a little bit confusing. But we'll press Shift A, uh, and we've got shaders, which is just all our materials. And we're going to add a glossy, uh, gl glossy node. And then from there, we can add a mix shader, which allows us to turn two, two of these into one output. So there's the output there. We can connect that to the surface, get rid of that, and um, and and we can connect that to that one. Just dragging it across, connect that one to that one. And um, and then render again. Um, we can see that it's it's slightly different color because it's reflecting nothing at the moment. It's reflecting the grayness that's already there. Um, but uh, that's how we make a glossy material. Now we'll get some reflections in there. We'll get some specularity if we had a different shape than a cube. And uh, and it should work. And another thing to mention is that a lot of the buttons that work in the 3D view. They work the same way here as well. So if I press Shift D, then we're going to get two because we've just duplicated. If I press X, we're going to delete. And it gets a whole lot more advanced from there. Um, again, I advise you to check out the other tutorials below. I just wanted to give you a quick little introduction to it, and I hope you understand from that point. Um, we've looked at materials, but there's also scene settings, which is very important as well, which is where if you if you, if you see renders and you see that they look like they're... Um, We've got some effect like a, a light that's been uh, blurred or something like that. Then mostly it's doing post processing, which you might want to go search as well. Um, and that is using nodes, so click use nodes on the scene. So basically, I'm not going to go through that right now, but uh, it's something to look into. So I hope you found that just a little bit helpful. Again, check out all the links in the description because they uh, they are the professionals. And I'm going to see you next video. Bye for now.